Um, here's our um, uh, kind of where, where we're at, and I, I always kind of want to begin the videos uh, by briefly going over the tools I'm using because uh, if you just tuned in or if this is your only time watching one of my videos, it helps to know a little bit about what I'm doing. I'm, I have uh, three different uh, important graphic images that I use as reference when I'm exploring systems. This one, which uh, shows uh, uh, color images of what the planets look like in the system map on the, on the, in the game itself. And though these are not always exactly accurate, they're a pretty close reference. And they also show the kind of value that you can earn from exploring the various different planets displayed here, or stars for that matter. The stars are all displayed over on the uh, right side here. And so I use this as a reference uh, frequently. Probably more often than that, though, I use this, uh, this image as a reference because uh, on the um, heads-up display in the, uh, in the cockpit of my ship, uh, to the left of the, uh, the radar screen at the bottom, um, every time I select a body, uh, a planet, a star, a moon, and want to consider exploring it, it will display one of these images, and if I uh, memorize these, which I'm still working on doing, but I'm getting better at it, um, I can very quickly identify the type of planet or star uh, or moon that it is. And that helps in the evaluation process, deciding whether I want to go to it uh, and gather scan data uh, with the goal of uh, you know earning additional credits that I can uh, Used for buying ships and you know things like that in the game. Um, so I usually start with this uh, with one of these images when I see it after I've made a selection, so that I can say, okay, I know that this is a high metal content world, or a rocky body, um, you know, or uh, an ammonia world, which are very valuable, or Earth-like worlds. So you know, I'll start with that. But then I also need to know whether or not that particular body falls within a range that would make it a high candidate for being uh, terraformable or life-sustaining. And so the next thing that I do is I look at this, uh, and these are star classification uh, letters. They represent different classifications of stars that are used in astrophysics, um, and the presumed uh, most likely habitable zones where a planet c could potentially have liquid water or you know to harbor life and those ranges fall within uh, these here like uh, on a K it would be 107 light seconds out to 100 and, uh, out to 480 light seconds and so I'll use those in conjunction with uh, these images here and then I'll use the system map uh, in the game to try and judge whether or not the planet falls within one of those ranges. So that's a technique that I use a lot. Uh, the other uh, uh, thing that I'll show you is this is what's called EDSM. If you're not familiar with it, it reads, uh, it can read from directly from your game uh, log and will be able to um, keep track of your travels and the number of systems that you first discovered. Uh, and uh, the kind of uh, ship that you have and you know all that good stuff. Um, I also found a couple of Wikipedia pages that I found useful. This stellar classifications page where I can look up more information about these different classes of stars and uh, that can help me in my uh, learning process. And then also uh, the gas giant classifications. Uh, this is known as the Sadarsky gas giant classification system and it helps you know whether or not a class one gas giant, what kind of an atmosphere it might have. Um, and this is just because I'm interested in uh, astrophysics and I find that this is great information to have. Uh, and finally, I also keep this page up because season three uh, beyond, which is releasing this year of Elite Dangerous, is the latest update uh, coming to the game uh, and it's going to be done in four stages. The first stage, the first release, will come out now. They just announced yesterday on uh, the 27th of February. 
Uh, today is February 21st, so we've only got six days to go, and there's a lot of new graphics and tools and uh, all kinds of stuff, particularly for explorers, which is my main uh, interest in the game. There are other people who do things like uh, combat, stuff like that, which right now doesn't really interest me. So anyway, these are the uh, references that I, that I use on a fairly regular basis. Um, the other thing I want to show you is I have three different tools that I use. One of them is voice attack, which will be the voice that responds when I give verbal commands. And uh, uh, that makes the game a lot more fun and a lot uh, more uh, immersive. Uh, I also use um, something called ED Discovery. And uh, ED Discovery is a tool that uh, also keeps track of my logs and uh, and also my EDSM account and can give me a lot of valuable statistics about my travels. For example, um, uh, yesterday um, you can see here that I jumped. That means that I traveled from uh, one star system to another star system. Uh, I jumped five times, so I visited, you know, five different systems. And the amount of light years that I traveled total uh, in that five jumps um, the scooping, that's when I'm refueling and how many times I, I refueled um, or how much I, I, I took in. I, I'm not really sure. I don't really use that information much. I just do the scooping. I don't care about that statistic. The number of scans that I took, every time I visit a system, I will visit planets or bodies or moons in there and each time I scan one of them, this increments. So this is the total number of scans that I did in that day and the amount of uh, estimated value that I will earn in credits once I turn all this data in. Uh, currently, however, I'm uh, nowhere near any place where I can turn the data in. This is me, that little yellow dot in the middle. And uh, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll be able to see where I am uh, in the uh, Milky Way galaxy. So I left from down here. I had a passenger with me, uh, and the passenger's mission was to travel to this location up on top uh, where they could collect a little data, which they did. And then after we su successfully collected the data, we began the return home. I was on a timetable with that. I was given one month to complete that journey and get back home. And so uh, when we got to this point here, uh, I decided to land on a planet and just gather, uh, getting into my, what they call an SRV, which is a surface reconnaissance vehicle, and drive around on the planet and gather some minerals where you shoot at various different rocks and then the, the fragments that fall off, you can scoop those up, uh, which can contain different minerals that you can use in the game. And uh, when I was, uh, when I went to land on that planet, I failed to look ahead of time at what the gravity was on that planet and it was a, a, a higher amount of gravity than I was accustomed to, to running into and so when I attempted to land I actually hit pretty hard on the on the surface of the planet. Did a little damage to my ship but for the most part it wasn't too severe. But my passenger got really upset. Actually I had five passengers and they got really upset and demanded that I take them to the nearest station and drop them off. And they gave me 20 minutes to do that. Well, at this point, I was uh, about, um, about uh, well, over 12,000 light years away from any starport. So there was no way that I could get them, um, you know, to drop them off. And so they surprised me by jumping ship. Uh, they just uh, announced we're leaving, and suddenly they ejected out of the ship onto the planet. I looked around to see if there were any uh, life pods that I could pick up and take on my ship and return to some safe harbor, but uh, there weren't, and so that was the end of that um, passenger mission. <laughs> so uh, at that point, when I realized that I no longer had to rush back, uh, uh, you know, based on their timetable, I decided I would just change course and continue exploration. And that's when I di diverged off here to the left and am on my way to a location um, way out here 
Um, let me see if I can uh, zoom in on this a little bit here. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to have to, let's see, where is it? It's right up here. Yeah. So I'm going to what's called the Colonia system, which is the only uh, hap, uh, inhabited uh, human inhabited base outside of the bubble, which is down here, which is where Earth and all the other human habitation in the year uh, 3304, which is the year the game uh, takes place in. Uh, this is where human habitation exists. And so this is the only place outside of the bubble. Um, uh, well, no, actually, there's one other, I think, up this way somewhere. Uh, I haven't gone, gone to yet. Um, I don't remember what they're called either, but I'm on my way to Colonia. There's several different starports there, and I plan on visiting all of them, and maybe while I'm there, I'll sell my uh, scan data, and that will make me the official first discoverer of uh, any of the systems that I scanned, which as I pointed out, there's over 600 of those. And um, at that point, I will also be able to collect all the credits that I've earned. The, um, the amount of uh, credits that I earn, let me, uh, let me see, I thought I launched this, but uh, apparently I didn't. Um, okay, Captain's Log is already running, all right, maybe I did launch it. Yeah, so the amount of uh, credits that I've earned on this trip so far just from scanning uh, uh, planets and systems is 71,177,680 credits. And I expect by the time I get to the Colonia area or Jacques Station, which is the main starport there, uh, and decide to sell that data, I will have well over 100 million credits. That's a lot, and I um, am lo really looking forward to that. The other tool that I'm using, now that I have it open here, um, um, the one that uh, you can see uh, here, let's see if I can drag it around, yeah, so this one here, uh, Captain's Log, uh, in addition to ED Discovery in the background there, um, is good for keeping track of all of my uh, scan data, so I can see from this which systems I visited just by clicking on these, and then I'll be able to see for example, the star types that I found in that system. And uh, around each one of those stars, I'll be able to see what uh, planets or moons I discovered, uh, whether or not it's a landable uh, a body, like this one has 1.44 g. And if I were to land there, and if I had an SRV, uh, I would uh, be able to go around and search for and collect any of these minerals that I could then use for various different purposes or sell whenever I arrive uh, at, at a destination uh, where I can sell that kind of stuff. So um, on the right hand side here it'll give you all the dope on uh, any one of these. So if I s select this one down here it tells me it's a high metal content body meaning that the, there's a lot of metals to be found and lots of um, <clears throat> important scientific statistical information about that body as well as what percentages of all of these different minerals I can expect to find. So it's really a very useful tool and uh, normally when I'm in the game uh, here I can see uh, at the very top I can see just a brief summary of each planetary body or whatever that I uh, have just scanned. So uh, I use this as a tool all the time. Um, uh, what you're seeing in front of you right now is my next uh, system that I'm going to be traveling to. It's 33 and a half light years away. And if you look over here in my navigation panel, uh, you can see that I have 277 jumps before I finally get to the Colonia system. Uh, I'm stopping very frequently and scanning systems, which often takes up to an hour to scan a whole system. Um, some days I can do more than others. You can see here that on a really good day I was able to visit, uh, in this case, 16 systems. Uh, I traveled a total that day of 526.74 light years. Um, I performed 76 scans, many of which were high value, and so I ended up making uh, 2,612 
1,087 uh, uh, credits that day on that on that trip. Uh, here you can see on uh, February 13th, I traveled to uh, I made eight jumps, traveled 261 light years, made 88 scans, and made a total of four million. Uh, yesterday, when I was out doing it, um, I only made a million, and that was in five jumps and 74 scans. So sometimes you'll run into, um, you know, a system that has things like Earth-like worlds. I found three of those so far in the last two years, and I found all three of those while on this trip. Um, they're very rare and hard to find, or water worlds, or um, ammonia, uh, ammonia-based life planets are also valuable. Um, so anyway. Those are the uh, tools, the techniques, the methods that I'm uh, using in the game. But really, my main reason for doing this isn't to make credits. It's just that I want to learn this technique while I'm traveling. Um, I'm just doing this for the fun of it. Now, the, uh, the, and, and for the sheer beauty, uh, there's so many beautiful things to see when I take the time to actually spook around in a system and just travel through ring systems and look at planetary surfaces. Unfortunately, the other thing that happened um, uh, back uh, here uh, at this junction where I uh, decided to, um, where I lost my passenger, is uh, while I was on the planet, um, I decided uh, to get into my SRV and go out and gather minerals, and I did that for a while. And then I uh, decided I needed to go grocery shopping, so I just left the computer on, set the emergency brake on my SRV, thinking that it would be safe, it usually is, to do that, and went grocery shopping. When I came back two hours later, the SRV was no longer there. In fact, I was now sitting in my, back in my ship, hovering over the planet in orbit. Uh, and uh, when I looked in my, um, my SRV bay, which is down here, I saw that it was empty. So what must have happened is that for some reason, somehow, I died on the surface of that planet while I was away, grocery shopping, but my avatar was still sitting in there and apparently uh, I died. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. It shouldn't have happened. There was nobody in the system. I was uh, 12,000 light years away from the nearest civilization and the nearest ship, uh, according to a different uh, reference map that I can use if I, if I want to see um, you know, how many other commanders are out and about, um, the nearest ship was probably uh, close to 1,000 light years away from me. So there, you know, I couldn't have been attacked unless I was attacked by something other than a you know, a pilot, uh, you know, in the game, but there are aliens, but they're um, over in the Pleiades sector, which is like uh, not around here, uh, not around where I am. The Pleiades sector <clears throat> is uh, like in this general vicinity down here where I'm pointing with my, uh, with my pointer. So um, <laughs> anyway, I don't have an SRV, which means that I, I could land on planets, but I won't be able to go out and explore. I'll buy another SRV when I finally get to the Colonia system, but until that time, all I can do is just kind of look and scan. Once I get an SRV, I'll be able to start collecting more minerals, which I'm looking forward to, so that when I finally return home back in the bubble <clears throat> in about seven or eight months from now, um, I will have um, accumulated a lot of materials that I can use for upgrading my ship and things like that. So that's, uh, that, that is, in a nutshell, everything that I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So at this point, let's go ahead and make, make our first jump. <laughs> 